Hello guys, welcome back to Cloud Damage, where we offend everybody. So, I'm just here talking today about... Uh, today, I, I don't know why I'm going to talk about this. This is not a part of my channel, but I'm just here. Um, I'm talking about I'm going to try and be more social. <laughs> Regardless, I'm going to be more social. I'm going to try and go out and do more socializations. Because I'm a hermit, if you haven't, or y'all don't know. But I'm a hermit. I'm social. If there's people around, but I don't go out to be social. I, I outside of work in the house and a random person I meet, I don't socialize. I don't go out of my way. So I'm trying to. There's like a church group thing on Wednesday. I might try and see how that goes. Um, we'll see how Sundays go and stuff like that. Ah, if you didn't know, I'm Christian, so it is what it is. It's more of just, those are the only things I know that will have any sort of grouping of people my age that I can talk to, hopefully. It's just, it's gone to that point where I'm in a small town, so I can't go anywhere, and I'm not going anywhere, I'm not driving, I'm, I'm saving money. The whole issue is I'm trying to save money in this economic situations we're in, I'm trying to save money. So later on in life, I can do whatever I want. But at the point right now, I'm at a point right now where I kind of need to socialize more because, well, you know, we all have ticking time clocks. I only have so long before either too jaded to do anything socially or romantically or the world goes to a point where we're just there's no point. Like everything's destroyed. So, you know, one of those things. I'm also just because I want to try and improve my socialization skills my social skills it's they're not the best I, i'm good talking i see the thing is i'm good talking it's the getting to know people part well actually i take that back through text i am a shitty human being i am a boring ass motherfucker i'll i'll let you know that right now but in person i am vibrant i am vibrant humorous wonderful to get along I ask questions, I try to get to know you, I let, as long as you talk and reciprocate, it's great. But if you just sit there and it feels like an investigation, well, fucking talk. That's the thing. The thing is, I keep seeing things about this, that, and the other. Um, I keep seeing Tim Pool have his opinions on relationships. And no offense to Tim Pool, but... I do not think he understands that we are no longer in his generation. We're not. I'm 25. My generation is very different from his in the sense of they are very different. Their social skills are different. Their standards of their understanding of people is different. So the, the, the video that's kind of sparking this right now, and I... I'm just too lazy to put things up for you. So I'm just going to explain. If you want to look it up, you can. It's one of Tim Pool's conversations about relationships and a girl. I think crying for being single or something like that. I don't know. It was like a few weeks ago. Regardless, he was talking about how essentially... Oh, no, it was the... No, no, no. It was ho math. It was ho math. He was talking about that. And he was talking about how guys think of things in one way. And girls think of things in another. And he's talking about this, then the other with. How shall we say? Oh, meth has it wrong about how girls perceive. He believes in the old fashioned status of you work hard, you play hard. And also that. What is it? The, the, the original way of, you know, women it, or society was men who provided got the women the strongest will survive that's great if we still lived back in those times where there were no promises made that's the problem my generation grew up with promises a lot of them a lot of promises that were made so and not necessarily promises but expectations were made all right hey guys if you do this this will happen all right, I did that. So why the hell is like half of society single and killing themselves? Mm hmm. Explain that to me. Explain why almost like a third of all men, if not a, I think it was either a fourth or a third of all men, tried to commit, you know, self-deletion. 
by the age of like 25, I think it is. So yeah, explain that to me. But then you also say we have to do all these things. My point specifically is my point to kind of argue and test and test everything is I, I will I don't concede to Empole's ideas of that. I and I don't necessarily concede to Homaf's ideas of it. It is the one of the things he said was the general rule of hypergamy. Women all go for the best of the best. It is just how it is. If not hypergamy, always going for better and better. Never settling down and saying, hey, well, this is what I truly deserve. Stuff like that. My point is, I believe that is true to a degree. There are a lot of people, well, and not maybe even that, but it is specifically the fact that a lot of girls or women nowadays, sorry, children, Sorry, everyone's a girl to me because I'm 25, so everyone's a child to me. Sorry, if I feel old and it's starting to get me. My point is simply that a lot of people out here are in this age of, especially with things they haven't earned, they still say they deserve. If you've worked hard and you have a, whatever, that's fine. You've earned it, you deserve it. But if you come out the womb and you just think, oh, I exist, therefore I, I get, no, you don't deserve that. The biggest problem right now for, how shall we say, the conceding of this side or that side or the, um, the fighting between temples and home maths is the fact of a lot of people right now believe they are 10 out of 10. They're perfect. They're God's little children. They are, but in a, in a way, but they're not 10 out of 10s. A lot of people on this planet are fives. A lot. I am, I have been told I am a five, a six, and a seven. And I do think that was when I probably did my hair better and stuff like that. I didn't have all this scruff. But the highest I've ever had was a seven. That is just what I've been told. I think of myself as a good six. My track record says I'm a fucking one but eh well not really no not that bad i've had sex but i've 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 done the monster what is it i've done the monster of two backs regardless it is interesting to see people from different generations argue about relationships because clearly one side is from a very different generation than that side tim pool's generation is very different from ours However, his, he does have a point. The strongest do survive. The problem with that is that we, or some people, get a bunch of leftovers. We get a bunch of people who are messed up because they went for you, and then they didn't want you, and, but, or they slept with you, women being hoes, to some, to some degree, women being a hoe. They went for the highest of chads, 10 out of 10. They got dumped or whatever. Now they're mentally broken because blah, blah, blah. I deserve a chad. But now we have to deal with all that. It's essentially when we have to deal with any sort of traumatic person or someone who's had traumatic issues. No offense, but that's extra baggage we don't really need to deal with. The problem being is that someone or women who are going for these things or experiencing, you know, 10 out of 10 people, whatever you want to call it, they don't get rid of that ability to discern their actual value amongst people. So therefore, eventually, we have to deal with all that bullshit of mental, oh, crap. Call it whatever you will. Hypergamy, was it forever widows or black? I can't remember what they called it. Something widow or I don't know. Essentially, always going for same, same old, same old, same old but they'll never ever get married again. Something like that. You can't tell... You say the strongest will survive. All right, that's fair. But the problem is, is that a majority of people now, especially women, or majority of women think that they deserve a 10 out of 10. We have done the stats. We have done the numbers. Most women want a man that is in the top 2% of American population 
they want people in the top 2%. If you actually get all the general data or data sets in there, that's essentially what they want. Even the money by itself, you know, six figures or more. Six figures or more. That puts people, that puts men at like 5%. So what happens to the rest of the 95% of people who are maybe like me, who I can't go out? Well, I can. I'm not going to, though, because your generation put me in a shitty situation economically. So congratulations, generation. Thanks. Thank you. I'll remember you when you voted for all the shit I got to deal with. So, yeah, by the way, everyone keeps saying it's the previous generation. It is. Congrats. So... Because remember, all this shit really started happening when the technology was coming up, regardless, regardless, off, off, off taper or off topic. The problem is people are growing up now from your generation, Tim Pool. They're coming up from your generation being told, oh, well, here's an iPad. All right. So my people, my generation are growing up brain dead. And just thinking they're, you know, perfect people in the world because your generation won't punish them for it. Won't teach them the real life lessons. But then you get mad at me when I kind of have my jaded chip off the old block or chip off my shoulder. Because I've seen life and how it is and it is not fun at all. I've seen life. I've been treated pretty badly. That is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. But, but, remember... All your experiences are valid, right? So which means don't get mad at me when I have some not so good opinions sometimes. Or, well, if my treatment of people is extremely arm stretched, you know, like I keep you at a distance. That is the price you pay for having certain attitudes in your generation. It is what it is. Now, the biggest problem right now is that a lot of men are saying, I'm not dealing with this bullshit. I'm not. We are not dealing with it. If you're acting like a child and you're not an adult, bug off. But a lot of other people, a lot of people in your generation are telling us, no, you should deal with that or die alone. No, that is not how that works. I'm going to find someone who's legitimate, but I'm not going to play my part if you don't play yours. See, people are always fine with playing the rules of I have my rules, and I'll, it's a lot, everywhere you go, it is always rules for me, and or rules for thee, and not for me, always, everybody, Tim, me, everybody, there's always going to be rules you say, well, you have to abide by it, but I don't, I, I came from a different generation, I don't have to abide by your rules, well, yeah, you do, all right, you can say that, all right, but then I'm going to have my rules, and if you don't wish to abide by them, that's fine, we, we can play that game. The issue, it comes down to the fact of a lot of men now, especially young men, remember, you're not helping us. You're not telling us how to actually get a girlfriend or something because, remember, the girls nowadays don't even talk to us. Again, how are you going to explain to a man who lives in bumfuck nowhere in a small town where everyone knows each other, but all the kids left to other cities. And don't bring that shit up of moving towns. Don't, don't bring that shit up. You'd say it's a choice. It's not a choice. Because a choice... Well, it is a choice. But it's an unconscionable choice. Unconscionable meaning, why would anyone do that? When you already have such a good, maybe, or a better aspect here and there. I don't like the argument that Tim brings up sometimes, where he pulls up shit about, well, it's always your choice. It's your choice to leave the city. No, it's not. Well, no, it is. It is my choice. But it's never that easy. You live on a fucking farm where you already can technically live on your own. But you also grew up in that. The world ends. Everyone has to learn how to live on a farm again. Congratulations, you're already 10 steps ahead. If it happens. But a lot of people don't. It is annoying to hear one side or one person say, well, I did it. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Not everyone can do that. And if you pull up the bullshit again, 
of hey, it's your choice, move. No, it's not. Because the, that's a dumbass decision. Remember, just because it's a choice doesn't mean it's a good one. And it's not really a choice if it's... Do you want death by fucking shotgun or a bullet to the head? It's not. It's a choice. It's a shitty one. The pro and it, see. The, actually, you know what? See, that's that's why I hate it. Because it's not a choice. It's an ultimatum. Shitty decision this way. Shitty decision. The shitty decision that way. It's not a choice. Because a choice usually gives you options of different routes to take. But usually, or should at least have some resemblance to each other. If I if I lived in a house and I sell that house to get a new house somewhere else. Fine. But you're also talking to a generation that can't buy houses, that can't just move, because most of them are paying rent through their paychecks and literally can barely almost live off of it. So understand, you are talking in a you are talking as if you're already in a far better situation than anyone else. I do not like that. I don't like that. It is very annoying to hear that shit come from people's mouths like that. Now Get, I'm in a good situation, technically. I live with my parents. But I've also lived with them for life, and I have a lot of money saved up. A lot. Just in case. I could live in an apartment for two years without a job. Technically. Now, that would burn all my savings, but I could do it. I could do it. It would burn through all my savings, but I could do it for two years. And not even look at another job. Now, again, I would have no money left. But, the thing is... Don't talk as if everyone can do it. That is what I don't like about people talking about generalities. Now, again, I know I just came through a bunch of generalities. And that is just what, from what I've seen. The things I watched. And also, but now, I'm not saying that's 100% accurate to everything. But the, the norm is changing and it's annoying. But again, I just do not like how someone like him talks. Well, remember, you're a millionaire, and yes, you are. I'm pretty sure you are to handle all the employees you have, plus the business you have, plus the views you've told you had. You're a, mil you're a millionaire. You are. And yes, you can talk about when you were homeless and all that. That's great. That doesn't change the fact for people who are still homeless. I just, your experience is good for you. That doesn't mean it's actually going to help someone else. That doesn't mean they have the same... See, this is the beautiful thing I love about it. So, in psychology, there's this thing called nature and nurture. But there's also this thing called chance. See, with nature and nurture, a person who's born, let's say, white, Caucasian, Christian family, well-to-do, or medium, medium well-to-do, never, will never usually probably have to worry about anything. But he has the genetic component in his DNA to say that he will grow tall and he would have been good if he worked with it at basketball. He would have been amazing. All right, that's nature. Nurture means someone has to grab him, teach him to play bas basketball, and he'll eventually grow up and do that, you know, work out and do that. And that's how you do that. The other side of things that people don't understand is there's also chance. You have to also be presented with an opportunity an option or even a remote slim existence of something to happen no offense but half the way the the way you talk about it is if someone already gets that opportunity that's not how that works one percent one per what is it i was talking to someone today at my job, there's a lot of people, employees below me, who want to be influencers, apparently. Influencers is like 1%, 1%, 1 of 1, of 1, of 1. Like, it is like 0.0001% of people actually become influencers and shit like that. It is the same idea with this, where he talks about the generalities of people, and it's kind of annoying, because he talks as if everyone has the opportunity. No. That is not how that works. Not to mention, actually, what was it? About a thousand people die a day, so it's kind of like, shut the fuck up. It's annoying to hear about people talk about... I am one who believes in pull yourselves by the bootstraps. I am. 
But I'm also not going to deny the fact there's a lot of people out there who are going to die tomorrow. There's a lot of people who will never get the chance to see tomorrow. A lot. All because they were given really shitty cards to deal, and that was it. They were just like, eh, whatever. Life said, here you go, here you go, here you go, boom. You won't make it till tomorrow. I don't like it when people talk as if everyone has the same opportunity. That is not the real world. Don't tell Americans to do this, this, and this when a lot of people cannot do that because the world has crushed them and said no and also put them in the position to make sure they can't do it. That's kind of my talk today. Sorry it's kind of gone to that point. It's just I really don't like it when people talk as if I don't like it when people talk about personal situations and then try to apply that to everyone and then say, yeah, do it. No, that's not how that works. That is not how that works. Yes, yours might help like one person that might be in a similar situation, but it's not going to help it. It's like, it's like medicine and psychology. That medicine might work for you, but it might not work for you, 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 you. It might kill all of you, but it works for you. Legitimate, that is how it works. Psychology medicine is usually tested on a lot of people to see if it works or not. I hate I hate to have this conversation, but it's it is getting to a point where people are just annoying to listen to. Because when they talk about politics and they talk about life and the expectance of life and relationships and all that, sorry, tangents. It is annoying to hear someone in that kind of position talk down to you because they say, well, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. And I'm like, they are. And this is where the bootstraps got them. What? Like, they're barely above ground. A lot of us are one foot in the grave already, if not financially. And someone tells us to pull us by the bootstraps and we're just like, that's not how the system works. We can't just go out to the woods. And you say that, but it's like... And you... See, he's a good... He, he's one of those people who's a really good argumenter. Or arguer. He can debate very well. But the problem is with debating... It's, debating is trying to prove your point. Not understand the actual situation of the world. I am just letting you know... Or him, or whoever wishes to understand... Just because someone tells you to pull you, pull you up by your bootstraps doesn't mean you shouldn't. You should absolutely try. But I'm also not going to ignore the fact that there might be a situation where you can't get out of. Pull yourself up by the bootstrap. I had a hole in my stomach at 17. I could have died. I easily could have died. Acid burned all my organs for three hours. I shouldn't be alive right now. I shouldn't. I should be dead and buried a long time ago. I can never run. Well, I could run again if I tried to, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't work. And I, I can try, but it's just I've all my energy when I was young is gone. All like I had six, I had like four years of working out from high school because of that, and I lost it all in, in three hours. I lost it all in a week. I will never be able to get back to the point of that, back to my previous health. I can get bigger and stronger, but I'll never get back to that kind of energy. It just I, it, the body just got rid of it. It just said, nope, we're good. And you can say this, that, or the other. And I'm like, I've, told, I, I've done everything I can. I, I take protein now a lot more than I, a lot more than probably I should. But, and it's still, there are points where there is no improvement. Someone can say, you can do this, this, and this. That's good for you. It applied to you. I'm in a small town where I don't meet a lot of people. A lot of the people I grew up with are gone. They're gone. They disappeared. It's been six years, technically, since I've met any of my friends here. I don't keep up with them. Sorry, I don't. I'm, I lost them all. Don't tell me, oh, you can go out and make people. All right, you do it. You already have a wife. Shut the hell up. The problem is talking as if you were in their situation. You are not. Just because you were homeless doesn't mean you're homeless like that guy or that guy. I promise you, they're all different. I have three, ho I have three homeless people I drive by to work every day, and they're all, all three are different. One just 
sits with a little buggy underneath a tree. The other has a full camp. And then one has nothing. Just because you've been through it doesn't mean you, you can truly one-on-one -on -one apply it to someone else. You can apply many aspects, but not all of it. That's why they call it the human experience. Regardless, I'm sorry for this rant. It is just annoying talking to people who are so black and white. Well, I'm black and white as well. I really hate the gray. But when they talk black and white, they're talking about human experience, which is not black and white. Now, because they talk about choices as if it is as simple as it could be. It is not. Choices are very seldom easy to make. That is my last bit here. I hope you all enjoy. I'll see you on the next one. All right. Peace.